But what I want to do is take a little bit and talk about how do you transfer music back and forth, for example, between note flight and finale and music score and, and notion and Sibelius. And you can name some other, um, other things that are possible. Um, if you do save on any of these, and this includes Word or Excel or any other program, if you just do a straight save, it saves in what's called a native format. Um, for example, Excel would be XLS or XLSX. Uh, Word would be DocX. And originally, Word would do Doc and nobody else could do Doc. So WordPerfect, which was a competing program, would do its own thing, and Word couldn't read WordPerfect, and WordPerfect couldn't read Word, and nobody was happy. Um, and so over time, they worked out these common things that Word could save in something called RTF, which WordPerfect could read. And WordPerfect could read, save an RTF, which Word could read. And everybody was a little happier, um, and it mostly worked. So we've got the same kind of situation with the notation software where um, Finale saves it as their thing, which MuseScore does not open or uh, NoteFlight does not open. But Finale can save it in something, uh, a common file format that they all can, can understand. Let me add the word mostly because it's not exactly perfect, but it works pretty darn well. So we've got two possibilities. One of them's MIDI. And remember what MIDI is. It just tells you what notes are being played. So if I'm playing a note, you know, on this keyboard and I've got the wiring set correctly, um, a message goes out here and says middle C was pressed. And so this one plays middle C. We played with that in class. All right. There's also something else. Um, well, let's see what happens. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to note flight. All right. So I'm going to create a score. And you notice when I do, I got two options here. Start by importing XML or MIDI files. So MIDI files can be created by any program that call that knows about MIDI. Studio One can create MIDI files. Finale can create MIDI files. So can NoteFlight. All right, so what I'm going to do, choose file, and let's go to, here we go. So what I have here are se several things. I got, this is Mozart Symphony number 40 in G minor. By the way, it's 85K. So MIDI file, somebody type this in. I did not do this. Um, and it asked me to create parts from tracks or channels. I have no idea. I'm going to do tracks. And you notice quantization. Now, you remember quantization means moving your MIDI notes to the grid. So if a note is a little off, you, switch, you smoosh it back. I'm going to tell it auto. In the case of notation, what I'm saying, if I said quarter, I'm saying the smallest note value this thing has is quarter notes. So even if it was a 16th or 32nd note, it would make it a quarter note. I'm going to let it be intelligent and select auto. Click OK, and it's loading. So this is going to take a second. So I've got two possible ways to do this, this transferring stuff back and forth. One is MIDI, and the reason why I'm pulling up MIDI first is so we can see the limitations. So notice i got composer, lyricist. That's not there, no subtitle. Everything here is in the same key. If I play... And I'm going to move my mic over in front of the speakers. Once it's it's building, page 28, 33, 6, 40. It's not a short symphony. It's a great one, though. Nice little bit of reverb there, but it's all piano. Now, that's supposed to be string parts. Um, there's, there's your bass part. That's cello. 
two violin parts, viola. You know, it's not there. I mean, there is nothing there. All right, so that's MIDI. Got the notes, got the values, but didn't do anything else. So one of the things that they did is they came up a bunch of years later, and it's going to be the next one, came up with something called Music XML. And that's what we're going to be using for this um, this next notation project because it saves a whole lot of um, note things. So there's my XML. Notice I've got four um, different file formats, MIDI, MP3, there's MP3, MP3, audio, PDF, you already know, and then MXL is uh, music XML. Unrecognized format, and that's what I'm talking about. Because occasionally somebody will put one out and no flight doesn't know what to do with it. And so you get little glitches like that. Um, let's see if I can find my other one. So I was messing with this. Now this one has a music XML extension. Use a rich, and I got options, original text positions, original system breaks. How would I know what to do? Generally, I'm going to guess. And then if I don't like that, I'll close it, upload it again. So, but I'm just going to leave that one like it is. And what it's doing now is it's loading the music XML and then pulling it up. Now, this is actually the last notation project. So the music XML, I'd already tested it out, so I knew it would work. But you notice we have the title. We've got the 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 uh, names here, B-flat trumpet, horn, drum set. I'm looking at a C score, which, let's add that back. I can take it to a transpose score. And now my horn and my trumpets and my trombone tuba are all in different keys as they should be with a transpose score. And if I hit play, so I got drums and, but straight piano, that's going to be part of that project is changing the sounds. We'll get to that in a minute. So that's MIDI versus music XML. Um, call up Studio One while I'm waiting. So remember what the difference between the two. MIDI is just note values. Music XML is focused more on notation. So MIDI can be used in notation, but all you're going to get is the notes and a few other things left and right. Uh, crescendos, uh, how loud something is, those kinds of things. Music XML is more for um, for notation.